Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. In the previous video, we calculated how much gross profit Tesla could make from car sales per kilowatt hour, which was part of our series in order to work out what Tesla need to achieve to reach a $10 trillion valuation in 2030. If you have not yet watched that, you can view it on the link above. In this video, we're going to do something similar. Rather than working out how many mega packs Tesla can sell everywhere, we can work out how much Tesla make per kilowatt hour and work back from there. It makes everything so much simpler and easier to follow. So we've established in the last video that Tesla should have their battery cost down to perhaps $20 to $30 per kilowatt hour. This does sound low, but bear in mind, Tesla aren't far off $50 now. For energy storage, I think I would like to take the lower end of that range at $20 per kilowatt hour. This is due to energy storage batteries being cheaper than car batteries. Why? Because weight is not a factor. Once these storage facilities are implemented, then they don't need to be moving. Currently, Tesla will be using LFP batteries, also known as lithium iron phosphate, which use iron as the cathode. Iron being so much cheaper and abundant than nickel reduces prices significantly. But who knows, we could all be using solid state graphene batteries by 2030, with cost and weight being negligible relative to what we have today. Either way, if Tesla continued to evolve their LFP batteries, they likely would have found some new improvements, like increasing the level of silicon in the anode, allowing for further lithium ion storage in the anode without degradation, creating more powerful batteries, or something like that. So let's use $20 kilowatt hour as our cost at the cell level. But of course, you're welcome to run the same model with whatever numbers you feel more likely. I think at the end of the day, the actual profit won't differ significantly. Going by previous prices for what Tesla have done with battery storage, it would cost around $50 million for a 100 megawatt hour battery. But we're forecasting nine years in the future, and perhaps due to all the renewable efficiencies that have developed, then the price of the battery is going to be based on what the value Tesla are able to offer their consumers, as in how much they're able to save on their power bill. So if solar panels have come down significantly in price, then so should have electricity costs too. Based on this, let's say that Megapack batteries would sell for $20 million, but it can be difficult to project what will happen so far in the future. Anyway, the cost of 100 megawatt hour battery storage at the cell level would be $2 million, $20 times 100,000 kilowatts. And perhaps the cost of everything else involved in setting up a Megapack may take it to a total of $5 million. So this is some easy math. Gross profit per megapack would be $15 million, and we have 100 megawatt hours. That would work out to $150 profit per kilowatt hour. But this doesn't sound like Tesla's business model. They want to control the energy system. By this stage, Tesla has possibly been the largest company in the world for some time, and has massive influence. So we're going to assume Tesla has got around the regulation they needed to have the control on the grid that they require. After talking to Tesla, they said a four kilowatt hour battery should produce around 13 to 20 kilowatt hours a day. This is today. We could perhaps expect some evolution in solar progress by 2030. However, from what Elon was saying on the latest Joe Rogan show, it doesn't sound like we can expect any sort of step change. So let's just take the higher end of that figure as the average. I.e. a four kilowatt solar panel will produce on average 20 kilowatt hours a day, or in other words, every kilowatt of solar panel will produce five kilowatt hours of energy a day. Tesla currently charged $2,000 per kilowatt of solar panel, including installation, implying it might cost them under $1,000 per kilowatt of solar panel to produce. Let's say that with all their technological advancements, that by 2030, Tesla have got the price down to $500 per kilowatt. Now, bear with me here. I know that there hasn't been much discussion of Tesla having their own solar farms, but it could be a possibility they include solar farms with their energy storage, and we need some way to work through the math. So let's go through this scenario for now. This would imply that through Tesla's own solar farms, they're able to generate a five kilowatt hours electricity a day for a one-off $500 per kilowatt of solar panel. But there would also need to be the cost of the battery in order to store the excess power that's not used. So this is very tough to judge, and I don't think anyone would have an answer. So let's just say half of the energy that is created is also stored. If we go with half, then that way our standard deviation can't be too far from either side. And if each kilowatt of solar panel produces five kilowatt hours a day, then that would mean we store two and a half kilowatt hours a day. But the next question is, how many days reserves do we keep in a battery pack? When we have bad weather, solar doesn't work so well. On the other hand, the sun is usually shining somewhere close enough too. And a lot of locations get a lot of sunshine all year round. So some serious algorithms would need to be calculated for just in case scenarios. 
Anyway, how about we say four days buffer for storage is ample? That would imply that for every kilowatt of solar, it needs to be supplemented with 10 kilowatt hours of battery, as two and a half kilowatt hours stored a day for four days is 10 kilowatt hours. So back to our 100 megawatt storage example. We thought this might cost Tesla $5 million. So when we convert that into kilowatt hours, we get a cost of just $50 per kilowatt hour. And if we need 10 kilowatt hours, then that's $500. So that would mean that for Tesla to offer five kilowatt hours a day, it would be a total cost of $1,000. Let's just leave out the home consumer with solar and battery storage for now. As you will see, it won't matter much just yet. Even in 2030, if the majority of home consumers had this set up, there would still be a massive requirement for energy. Just look at New York City, for example. There simply isn't enough of a large enough area to place solar on the roofs of skyscrapers to power the whole building. So we're going to state under the assumption that there is still plenty of demand for power and that we're replacing fossil fuels. Yes, Tesla's mission is to move into renewable energy, but most end users are not going to simply move over to renewable energy for the sake of it being renewable. At the end of the day, they're price sensitive, so it needs to be cheaper than current electricity prices. If consumers are currently paying an average of 20 cents a kilowatt hour, and if Tesla are able to offer it at an average of 10 cents a kilowatt hour, then that's a significant enough saving to motivate consumers moving over. Okay, great. So this should all be very simple then. From a one kilowatt solar panel that makes five kilowatt hours a day, Tesla can earn 10 cents per kilowatt hour, meaning 50 cents a day, or $180 a year. Now we've estimated that this cost Tesla $1,000 in total. Solar should last 30 years, but hopefully a lot longer by 2030, and the batteries should have similar lifetime too, giving Tesla an income of just over $5,000 over the lifetime. So if the solar panel lasted 30 years, and produced five kilowatt hours a day over 30 years, it would be a total of just over 50,000 kilowatt hours produced, coming in at around two cents per kilowatt hour. $1,000 divided by 50,000 kilowatt hours. This kind of means that Tesla would be paying two cents per kilowatt hour. However, this is projecting over 30 years. In finance, there is something called net present value, which factors in the fact that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow or in 30 years. This is discounted by what is known as the internal rate of return, but due to how low interest rates are, I would estimate it costing only around two and a half cents when factored in. In any event, this is still a lot cheaper than what we're paying for power now. This is if every kilowatt hour they produce is sold, which it might not be, although it's likely that there wouldn't be too much wastage as they would build the right amount of batteries to meet demand as close as possible, and they can control supply and demand more with pricing. Oh yeah, that's right, supply and demand. We're just using consistent flat rates here, but if Tesla have electricity stored, then that changes everything. They can simply sell electricity when demand is at the highest and buy when demand is the lowest. And thus we arrive at Tesla's real business model. Now, although home consumers will be able to feed back excess energy they have into the grid, most consumers will generally buy about the level they need to self-sustain. In other words, there won't be significant abundant power being generated from homes. And actually, home power usage doesn't even account for one quarter of power usage. Some industries will be able to use solar, perhaps factories on their roofs, depending on the volume to surface area and intensity of energy consumption. Remember, this was the initial concept of Giga Nevada to have a complete solar roof. But I would say in most cases, this still won't be sufficient. Essentially, there will need to be a solar and wind farms and other renewable energy sources to feed into the grid. Although a coal plant can take a whole day to start get going, once it's going, it produces consistent power, whereas the wind is not always blowing and the sun is not always shining, which is why energy storage is such a good solution for these scenarios. But like I said, coal produces at a consistent rate, whereas energy demand is not at all consistent. We do what we can to balance this out with solutions like Pika plants combined cycle gas turbines with multiple cycles, pump storage hydroelectricity, but having sufficient energy stored in batteries is far more efficient and feasible. You can take as much energy as required when it's required. So we have supply and demand. When demand is higher, power will be more expensive, and when it's lower, it will be cheaper. And Tesla will have created their auto bidder software to deal with this. It will likely learn through Tesla's Dojo AI computer and be able to calculate when and where energy is required. It will likely be a fairly consistent pattern. It will learn when energy is created. 
It could factor in things like weather patterns and predict how much sunlight will come from where. But this is just the start of it. Imagine if Tesla can also transport energy too. There could be boring tunnels set up around various grids, traveling through boring tunnels or hyperloops to deliver energy where it's needed. If it's in short supply and not expecting sun for some time, or even the consumers too, they might receive alerts on their Tesla app that energy is cheap and to plug in their Cybertruck into the power wall to charge their battery at a cheap rate. And then an alert telling them later that power is more expensive and they can sell it back to the grid at a profit. This is known as virtual power plants or VPP. Anyway, we seem to have digressed somewhat with the logistics of how it will all work. So bottom line, if the cost for 10 kilowatt hours, including sufficient solar panels is $1,000, that would mean the cost is $100 per kilowatt hour of battery. And if it produces 50,000 kilowatt hours with a 10 kilowatt hour of battery over its lifetime, it would essentially produce 5,000 kilowatt hours per kilowatt hour of battery. Earning an average of 10 cents a kilowatt hour, then that would mean it would produce $500 of income. And then when it was the initial cost of the solar and battery of $100, earning an average of 10 cents a kilowatt hour then that means it produces $500 of income over its lifetime. Then there was the initial cost of the solar and battery of $100. So in other words, I think we've just established that each kilowatt hour of battery and energy storage is worth $400, which is significantly higher than the $150 by simply selling the batteries. Remember, this is not like actual income. This is more like creating assets that are worth this much. You're creating an asset that generates this much income over 30 years with an exceptional return. It's a bit of creative accounting, but nothing like Enron. Also, just a thought, if Tesla did produce any extra energy, they could always use it to mine more Bitcoin. But it actually goes further than that, as we've basically just calculated that the cost of energy will be cut in half, but those savings will proliferate through the economy and create deflation. For example, as energy costs less, it will mean mining costs less, and then the price of iron will go down too but that sounds like a whole other episode on its own, but just something to think about. In the next part, we will work out how much profit Tesla will be making from their residential solar and power walls. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.